Here it is going down guys, Talk Narrow City here, back for another video. I hope you guys are doing really, really well. I'm sat in my car today on the, the beautiful Yarmouth seafront. Uh, basically, my house is like two minutes that way. Uh, I've been on Radio Norfolk this morning in the Yarmouth studio, so I'm on my way back now and I just thought I'd talk about last night's annual general meeting, the Norwich City AGM, where everything is discussed. The whole board was there, Alex Neal, etc, etc. Majority shareholders were there and shareholders uh, and the shareholders can pose questions to Delia, Alex Neal, Ed Ball, Jez Moxie, whoever they like, and a lot of things came from it. I wasn't actually there, I could have been there. I'm really gutted I didn't go actually. Um, I would have liked to have done, but I followed it via uh, Mustard TV, Radio Norfolk, etc. And it seemed like a very feisty annual general meeting. I spoke to a few people before, and they said, you know, AGMs are, 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 um, are normally like stage managed, and certain questions are left out, and this very kind of blase. Last night, that wasn't the case. Norwich City fans showed their frustrations towards the board, and I think that's rightly so. And I think Ed Balls, Jez Moxie, Alex Neal will take that on board to a certain extent. Um, Ed Balls and Jez Moxie both speak very well. But as I said on Radio Norfolk, there's a lot of talk coming out of Norwich City at the moment and there's nothing coming on the pitch. I want that talking to be done on the pitch. Personally, if we're winning games, I don't care how much money we're taking, how much money we're making, who's taking a hundred grand, 200 grand bonuses, how much Dave McNally took when he resigned. I just want Norwich City to be winning games. It's as simple as that. I'm not a businessman in any sense. And all these numbers and stuff start to get dragged in when Norwich City are performing badly, which we are at the moment. Five wins in five defeats in a row is not good enough for Norwich City in this in this league or in any league. So if we're not winning games, how much money Dave McNally took as a resignation amount or how much Ed Balls was making when he stepped in as CEO... They don't matter if we're winning games. It starts to matter if we're not, and that's just the simple nature of not doing very well. Now, let's address a few issues that came up last night. The big one for me was that Ricky Martin's been appointed as the head of recruitment. For me, that's the wrong move, Ricky Martin. His track record isn't great at Norwich City. I know he's a, he's a Norwich City man through and through. He's been at the club 14 years, but is he the man to be taking us forward in terms of recruitment? in an area where we've clearly been underperforming for five, six years. No, he's not. Also, you've got um, Ed Balls was taking £90,000 per annum as a CEO role when um, uh, Dave McNally stepped down. Um, as well as that, apparently McNally resigned and then withdrew that resignation and t still took, I think, a £1.6 million payoff, which is a lot of money, £1.6 million. Um, as well as that, you've got Alex Neal kind of throwing his players under the bus. Comments like Sebastian Bassong, uh, he, he won headers, but not the crucial headers. Um, Kyle Lafferty was beefing up on Twitter as always. Uh, Alex Neal was saying that he watches at Kyle Lafferty week in, week out, and th uh, there's other strikers that offer more. Kyle Lafferty would proceeded to tweet in his international record, which is something like 10 goals in 13 games for Northern Ireland, which, in my opinion, Kyle Lafferty deserves a chance. And if I was Kyle Lafferty working hard every day, uh, uh, scoring goals from a country and other strikers around me at the club aren't scoring goals. I'd want a chance. Kind of agree with, with Kyle Lafferty there. I understand that Lafferty is a very much Marmite player. Loads of people love him. Loads of people hate him. I'm starting to think that Lafferty does deserve a chance. There was also talks about external investment, things like that. It looks like that isn't going to happen. Delia Smith and Wynne Jones are going to pass their shares down to their nephew uh, when they need to. So that probably won't happen as well. I've basically written everything down on my notepad because there was so much discussed. Um, I guess that's it. Other things like only 15% of the Galway Rose sponsorship came through, which seemed like a bit of a poor move uh, in terms of getting that sponsorship done, but apparently the club didn't really lose out in the long run. Uh, there were some positives, though. Jacob Murphy signed to the club until 2021, which is great news. Uh, one of our key players this year, and a lot of people were fearing that uh, that Jacob Murphy was going to be leaving the club. Uh, now we just need to get Josh Murphy wrapped up on a long-term contract, and that's brilliant stuff. As well as that, safe standing looks like... Jez Moxie and Ed Balls are both in favour of safe standing. We all know, knew that Je Jez Moxie had a good thing with like stadium development. I'm not too clued up on Jez Moxie, but from the people who I know who, who are really clued up on safe standing, etc., they said that Jez Moxie, he's a good chairman, uh, uh, a good CEO to have if you want, you know, stadium uh, expansion, safe standing, etc. And that was once again... Um, 
solidified last night. They're going to be looking into safe stand and possibly giving it to us, uh, depending on, on things. Ed Ball said it'll only happen, though, if it doesn't decrease capacity. Now, I was in the knowledge that safe standing doesn't affect capacity, but I'm not too sure. Uh, I'm not a safe standing expert. That's kind of everything, really. Lots and lots went on. I guess the main takeaways were, though, that the board are 100% behind Alex Neil at the moment and they, and they want him to succeed, which is completely fair enough. Uh, I think it's good that the club have faith in managers and that we're not sacking managers left, right and centre. But at the same time, we need to realise that if this losing streak continues, we haven't got a chance in getting an automatic promotion, let alone the playoffs. So... That's um, the AGM rounded up from Yarmouth Seafront. I want to know what you guys thought about the AGM. Let me know down in the comments section below. Um, lots went on. What were your thoughts on, on, on the whole Dave McNally resignation stuff? Do you agree that the board are 100% back in Alex Neal? What do you think about Alex Neal's comments regarding the players, the flack he takes, stuff like that? And I guess you're optimistic for Derby. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you very soon. Peace out. Fed